Andy Johnson. We are looking at some research used to support the three queuing systems used to identify words during the process of reading. This is by no means comprehensive or complete. It's just some of the research out there. First of all, eye movement studies. These have demonstrated that higher level thinking processes actually direct where the eyes fixate or stop during reading and the number and types of regressions that we make. We go back and we re read words. So what's in the head directs the eyes during the act of reading. Eye movement studies also indicate that not all the words are fixated on. We pass over. Content words are fixated on about approximately 85%. Function words approximately 35%. So based on what's in our head, what we know both about semantics and content and syntax, some of the words are passed right over. The reader's own context-driven predictions allow them to skip words while reading. Our brain simply fills in the blanks to make us seem like we have actually read every single word or perceived every one. So eye movement research shows that readers use semantic and syntactic information to perceive, make predictions, or identify words during the act of reading whole complete texts. Some schema studies from cognitive psychology. We use what's in our head to create meaning. That's a series of dots. But based on the knowledge in our head, we put that together and we see a Dalmatian there, hopefully sniffing the ground. This is the theory of Gestalt. The brain looks for patterns and fills in the blanks. And again, a bunch of dots, but our brain fills in the blanks and we see a giraffe down there. Now, a schema is a knowledge structure related to specific topics. It's like a file folder in our head. We use this to help us understand both what we read and what we perceive. So schema is used to simultaneously analyze various dimensions of the text while we are reading. And you see the different dimensions there, semantic, syntax, and pragmatics, as well as graphophonemic information. So schema contributes to enhance fluency, word identification, memory, and comprehension. We use what's in our head to make sense of what's on the page. What's in our head what is on the page. Now, psycholinguistic and priming studies in which semantic or syntactic variables were controlled, and they've done this a variety of different ways. And readers use semantic information and syntactic information to identify or predict words. A variety of studies in these areas have demonstrated that we use these things. Miscue analysis as well shows that students' miscues are often semantically correct, but not syntactically correct, and vice versa. Syntactically correct and not semantically correct. We are creating meaning with print. And then brain imaging studies. A variety of strategies are used to control both semantic variables and syntactic variables, and they show systems or parts of our brains that are used for each one of these. Reading instruction studies as well have shown that attending to semantics and syntax can improve the ability to create meaning with print. The brain uses three cueing systems to identify words as we read. Systems are various parts of the brain that work together, not a single system. And you can stop and look at some of the studies used here.